calculus distance speed and acceleration distance measures how far one thing is from another for example the length of a journey or the height of something above the ground distance is measured in meters m and typically represented by the letters s d or h d for distance h for height and s is the term typically used for distance in physics and science. Speed or velocity represents a change in distance in a given time period, for example in travelling at the rate of 30 km per hour. So an hour ago you were 30 km away, so you've changed the distance in a period of time. So it's distance per time. It's measured in metres per second, written as m over s, or ms to the minus 1, and typically represented by the letter v, where v is the rate of change of distance, ds in time, ds dt, or s dash. Acceleration measures a change in speed in a given time period. For example, taking 10 seconds to change from travelling at 60 km an hour to 120 km an hour after joining a motorway. Acceleration is measured in metres per second per second. It's written as m over s squared, or ms to the minus 2, and typically represented by the letter a for acceleration, where a is the rate of change of velocity in time, or v dash. So if you went from 60 to 100 in 10 seconds, you're changing at the rate of, well, it's 60k in 10 seconds, or six kilometers faster per hour per second. So A is dv dt, or v dash, or the second derivative of distance d2s dt squared, or s double dash. So we go from distance, distance per time is velocity, and a change in distance per time, or a change of velocity, is A acceleration. So again, the useful formula are distance, either is s, d or h, speed or velocity, given as v is ds dt or s dash, and acceleration given as a, the rate of change of velocity over time, dv dt or d2s dt squared or s double dash. In the measurement units, well for distance it's in meters, for speed meters per second, and acceleration meters per second squared. There are some observations from physics that are very useful in solving questions. For example, if you throw or propel an object into the air, they'll often use the word propel rather than throw, but if you propel an object into the air, the highest point it reaches is the point where its speed is zero. So imagine throwing something up, 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 and then it loses energy, and then it has to fall again. At the point it's at its very top, it sort of stops before it falls. It stopped going up, it started going down, so its velocity at that point, its speed is zero. It's gone from going up to going down, so it must go through the point zero. So V is equal to ds dt, the rate of change of distance over time, or zero, at the highest point. And also, when an object returns and hits the ground, its height, or distance above the ground, is given by distance is zero. Now, this might seem a bit, you know, unnecessary to remember that if the distance above the ground is zero, s is zero when it's hit the ground, but it actually is a useful formula that we'll use to have this equation at a certain time, because we can find out then the time at which it hit the ground. So here's an example. A missile is fired up into the air. The height h meters of the missile above the firing position is given by this. h is t into 200 minus 5t. Where t is the time in seconds from the instant the missile is fired. So that's our height in meters above the ground. And what we're asked to do is to find the following. The speed of the missile after 10 seconds. The acceleration of the missile. And one second before reaching its greatest possible height, the missile strikes a target. We're asked to find the height of that target. 
So there are three things to find. So we'll start with the first. We'll find the speed of the missile after 10 seconds. So, speed of the missile. What formula do we have? Well, we know that the speed is defined as the rate of change of distance. In this case, the height is the distance involved with respect to time. So h is t into 200 minus 5t, or if we multiply in 200t minus 5t squared. So that's our formula for height or for distance. And we're interested in the rate of change of that with respect to time. And the general formula of velocity is the rate of change of distance with respect to time. So v is dh dt. So if we differentiate this function here of 200t minus 5t squared with respect to the variable t, well, 200t would become 200, and the t squared will become 2t, so minus 5t squared will become minus 10t. And that's our formula now, v, the velocity, at any given time, t, for this missile. We were asked for the speed of the missile after 10 seconds. So we'd like to use the formula where t has a value of 10. So the formula was v is dh dt, or 200 minus 10t, but t is 10. So at the point t is 10, it's 200 minus 10 times 10, or 200 minus 100, or 100. So the velocity is 100, and that's in meters per second. So we found the speed of the missile after 10 seconds. We now turn to the acceleration of the missile. We look again for the formula for acceleration. And acceleration is given by the rate of change of speed or velocity with respect to time. So the general formula for velocity is that v is equal to 200 minus 10t. But we're interested now in acceleration or the rate of change of velocity. So the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is a is dv dt. So we now have to get the derivative of this with respect to time. And if we differentiate 200, we get nothing. And minus 10t with respect to t, we get minus 10. So the acceleration is minus 10. And that's in meters per second squared, or ms to the minus 2. So that now is the acceleration of the missile. The third thing we were asked to find was the height of the target. Now we were told that one second before its greatest possible height, the missile strikes the target. Now this is the note from the observation from physics. At the greatest possible height, the velocity is zero. It stopped going up, it started coming down, it must have gone through zero. So it's between climbing and falling, so it's not moving at that point. Its velocity is zero. So let's find out when its velocity is zero. Well, the height equation was 200t minus 5t squared, and the velocity equation was 200 minus 10t. And we want the velocity to equal zero. So the velocity equals zero when 200 minus 10t is zero. And that's an equation now, an algebraic equation that we can solve. So 200, taking the minus 10 to the other side, minus 10t, we get 200 is 10t, dividing both sides by 10, we get t is equal to 20 seconds. So that's when the velocity equals zero. And we're interested in it one second below, before that. So one second before maximum height is 20 minus 1, or 19 seconds after launch. And the formula for our height is h is equal to t into 200 minus 5t. So if we now use that formula for height for 19 seconds, we should find the height of the target. So calculating the height when t is 19, there's our general formula. And now h is equal to wherever we had t, we put in 19. So 19, 200 minus 5 times 19. And now this is just arithmetic. 5 times 19 is 95. 200 minus 95 within the brackets gives us 105. 19 times 105 is 1995. And that's in metres. So the height of the target is 1995 metres.